Here is a top field TF7700 HD PVR satellite receiver, which I got at a second hand store for a mere 4 euro 90. I'm sure this once was quite a fancy device, but it has seen some better days. It's dirty, it's beaten up, the faceplate is broken, and the remote control is missing. Probably the biggest issue for me is I don't have a satellite dish. So what did I get this for? Well, let's take a look inside. The warranty sticker is still intact, but I am about to change that. Here is the inside, and now you know what I got this for. 4 Euro 90 for a 500 GB SATA hard disk drive made by Hitachi is not bad. If it works, of course, I will test it before using it. We also have quite a nicely built power supply. All of the outputs are labeled, so it might actually be useful for something after replacing these two bulging capacitors. And there are also some useful components on the main board. So it's now time to tear this apart. Before tearing it apart, I thought I should at least plug it in and see what happens. And well, despite those two bad capacitors and the power supply, it does actually seem to work. I took out the power supply and it was resting on these blocks. And these are made from a heat conductive silicone. So in addition to the usual heat sinks, the power supply was also able to dissipate some heat through the bottom of the case. Quite interesting. The power supply has been separated from the rest of the unit, and if I plug it in, I can measure all of the voltages that are labeled on the board. 5 volts and 12 volts for the hard disk drive, and then up here, 24 volts, 17 volts, 7.5 volts, 5 volts, another 5 volt rail, 3.3 volts, and two 2.4 volt outputs. I have no idea what they needed those for. So all of the voltages are there, so this power supply should still be useful for something after replacing those two bulging capacitors, obviously. The hard disk drive is mounted to its base by these rubber grommets, and the hard disk drive base is mounted to the case by these rubber grommets, and all that provides some pretty good dampening for the hard disk drive. Here is the front circuit board with the vacuum fluorescent display, and a little surprise, a CR2032 button cell battery. Good luck finding and replacing that when it goes empty. I noticed the satellite receiver when powering it up was outputting something that looked like an error code in the display. So let's test this button cell and see if it was empty, causing that error code. At first glance, the battery seems reasonably good, but putting a small load in parallel reveals it is very, very dead. So this would have needed to be replaced. But of course, who's going to have the idea to do that? You can't even see it when you open up the device. You need to tear it apart completely. And here are all the components that I have salvaged. 
the power supply, hard disk drive, cables, a serial and a USB connector, screws, nuts and washers, some heat sinks. This tiny one is nice. That might be useful for something like a Raspberry Pi. I have unsoldered only these three components from the boards, the remote control sensor, button cell holder, and this LM317 voltage regulator with heatsink. It is quite difficult to unsolder components from multi-layer boards, so most of the time it's just not worth it. I tested the hard disk drive and unfortunately there was one current pending sector. This other program that I use also pointed out some CRC errors. The good news is current pending sectors can be repaired. So I low level formatted the hard disk drive and ran the Windows check disk command. And now the current pending sector is gone. The other program only keeps on pointing out those CRC errors, but as far as I know, those are not that relevant. I'm not saying that the hard disk drive is now perfectly fine. I'm not going to use it for anything important, but it will come in useful at some point. So I think 4 euro 90 for that was a decent deal. Thank you for watching.